Life Audio. Hey, Ranters, Bill Sinyard here. I'm excited to share this special episode of the Happy Rant with you. I know, I know it sounds like Gospel Rant, but this is actually another show on the Life Audio Podcast Network that I think you might like. In each episode, three friends, Barnabas Piper, Ronnie Martin, and Ted Cluck, talk about everything, believe me, everything from current events to pastor life. If you like what you hear, I encourage you to listen to the show on Life Audio or wherever you get your podcast. I'll be back soon with a brand new episode of Gospel Rant that you won't want to miss. Thank you so much for listening. Take heart, child of God. Hey, welcome to the Happy Ramp Podcast. I am Ted Cluck, joined as always in studio by my good friends, my partners in radio, Barnabas Piper and Ronald J. Martin. I thought what we'd do this morning, boys, uh, is just do a quick primer on the show, who we are, who we aren't, um, what they can expect from the Happy Ramp Podcast. And uh, I want to I wanna just start with uh, some intros. So I am Ted Cluck. All three of us are writers. Um, so that's kind of one thing that, that binds us together. Uh, we're all authors. We've all written books. Um, I made my living for like 15 years doing books and magazine work. Uh, and then about seven years ago, started teaching college. So I'm a college journalism professor at Union University. Shout out Union U. Um, and I host this podcast and I coach football and I love football. And that's, uh, that's pretty much the deal with me now you guys are you guys are pastors you're men of the cloth and lest people think that this is just you know three middle-aged white guys talking about ministry um oh no this is three middle-aged white guys talking about other things and sometimes ministry uh pipe tell us about yourself yeah so um i am i'm currently an assistant pastor at emmanuel church in nashville uh, prior to joining staff at Emmanuel, so I, I started working at the church in 2019. Prior to that, I spent about 14 or 15 years in the Christian publishing industry. So a variety of different roles, worked at Crossway Books, worked at Moody Publishers, and then spent the last six years working at Lifeway, doing a handful of different things. And so, yeah, pretty pretty ensconced in the world of books and writing. And I did some marketing and some editing and some you know, sales and uh, attended every Christian conference known to humanity. Uh, Gosh, that's lanyard. glamorous, Pipe. Ryan did the same thing, but he paid to go to all of them. Or, um, yeah, or was or was funded by, by a church, something along those lines. By but the yeah, Middle the, Eastern oil baron that funds Sojourn Network, <laughs> which is now called something else. Yeah, um, called Harbor Network now. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm a, a dad of two daughters and married and... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, you mentioned writing. We would be burying the lead if we didn't mention that one of the things that we wrote, we being all three of us, is the Happy Rant book. If anything about this show piques your interest, there's a written form which might even be more intelligent. Oh, man. Yeah, Pipe, that's a great promo. Like, you're... you're like a dog on a chain with this promo work. Like, you you handled (laughs) all the promo work before, and now that Salem Media is taking that off your plate, it's like you kind of can't give it away. And also, like, I find it hard to believe that you were able to extricate yourself from the glitz and glamour of Christian publishing. Man, what an industry. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, so it's, I mean, it was, so it was hard to give up the, the jet-setting lifestyle um, <laughs> of, of coach flights to places like Amarillo, Texas, oh. and, you know, uh, Newark, New Jersey. But, I, you know, for the, for the good of the kingdom and my family it was the right move to make <laughs> you managed to do it well ronald hasn't given up that lifestyle and we're gonna mm. hear about him in a minute after we take a break miracles are everywhere let our adventure begin discover pure Flix, your premium streaming service where faith and family values come home ready to have some fun the most exclusive selection of quality wholesome movies and series that will uplift your spirit a man can argue whether god exists but when he looks at his daughters he knows with new arrivals every week unbelievable save big and enjoy the possibilities like invitations to exclusive theatrical screenings i see it so i believe it find out more by joining today at pureflix.com Hello, hello, Quinice Petway here, co-host of the Your Daily Bible Verse podcast. 
Are you someone who loves to take a deep dive into God's word, one verse at a time to explore his will for your life and desire to draw closer to him? If that sounds like you, I'd love to invite you to head over to lifeaudio.com and search your daily Bible verse to tune in and subscribe for daily inspiration, life application, and spiritual transformation through the in-depth exploration of God's Word. All right, baby. So you and I have known each other for a decade now, decade plus. Uh, yeah, a decade we, plus for sure. Yeah, yeah. We we've, we've written two amazing books together, and and mm. we have a third coming out per uh, Piper's promo of a couple of minutes ago. And um, you, I think, were like a worship guy when I met you, uh, but you're now a pastor in Ohio. Tell us about yourself. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I got my. I got my start with with all of this kind of media stuff we did 25 years ago with mm-hmm. with uh, working in the music industry, putting out a bunch of records, being on the road, uh, touring and producing albums, working with a label called Tooth and Nail for years and years, and then uh, yes, yeah, slowly, slowly got pulled, uh, kicking, screaming as they say, into ministry, doing mm-hmm. some worship stuff. Um, born and raised in Southern California then uh, relocated to Ohio almost 12 years ago and have since um, planted a couple of churches yeah. and uh, yeah, work with a denomination called the EV free evangelical free church of America work with a, a network called Harbor network. I'm the director of leader renewal for Harbor network mm. and uh, yeah, writing books with you boys and on my own and uh, still making music. I still have a studio that I, that I'm, that I work in. And, um, so doing a lot of the same things that I've always done, but I've, I've added a lot more to the plate. I'm also finishing a degree, a doctorate at Midwestern right now, just to wow, make things man. a little more fun. And, Solid uh, flex. Um, but I think, you know, I think we would say that the most important thing I do is what I'm doing right now, which and is, and you do it one to two podcast. times a month. Yeah, no, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. And Absolutely. despite having your own studio, your audio sounds the worst out of all three of us this morning. Yeah, 100%. I, I, this, re, this remains one of my favorite things about Ronnie is that he has the longest career on this show in anything involving microphones yeah. and also has <laughs> the most bad luck with anything involving microphones. That, that is interesting, isn't it, Pipe? Um, baby, where are you calling in from this morning? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of around the house, but I couldn't be in my studio this morning. So it's, okay. uh, yeah, it sounds a little, the, sa- so the sound is sketchy. Hey, yeah. if you listen to my records, the sound is sketchy. I've always had sketch sound. It's just well, part of my, it's part of who I am. You're in Ashland, Ohio, but you sound like you're calling in from an airplane, which is where you really want to be. Um, which is what podcasts are supposed to sound like. Let's be Baby, what's your, what's your favorite thing about Ohio? I'm putting you on the spot a little yeah, that's bit. That's a great Doing a little question. interview work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a pregnant well, pause what, right there. Uh, it's what I always tell everybody, man. It went, in Southern California, it, it's, uh, it's really one note. So mm. it's, in, mm. in some ways, it, it's good, right? The weather's always between 75 and 90, and sometimes it, it, it peaks above that. But it's, yeah. it's always the same. Um, there mm. are no seasons. And so there's this mad rush. And yeah. there's this sort of this cycle of productivity that never ends. What I like about mm. Ohio is there are those pauses with the seasons and with the snow days. And I just really love that. I love it so much. Um, I don't even have words to express it. It has mm. been like one of the major shifts uh, for me in life that has just, you know, made life a little more fuller and richer. Just this kind of weather, enjoying these seasons. I love it. I love it so much. Nice, so. baby. Uh, what's been your favorite thing about working with me all these years? As you think about um, the work I, that we've done together, the, yeah. the books, the media mogul stuff that we're doing now. Yeah, really world-changing endeavors e- across the board. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's easy, Big T. I think okay. uh, on one hand, I, I appreciate our friendship, but I'm going to say even more so than the friendship has just been the overwhelming success that we've enjoyed <laughs> yeah. together. And, yeah, uh, the, the huge I piles mean, of money I, uh, we've been. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, just writing that first book in 2012 with you on Bethany mm. House, mm. Um, you know, it, it, it allowed me to afford the lifestyle that I, that I currently operate <laughs> out of. Yeah. And uh, so I, I appreciate you, uh, you know, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate how we have developed 
not not just a friendship into a book, but a friendship into a book that then morphed into an empire. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, I appreciate your honesty and your candor on that one, because a lot of people would have gone, you know, the humble route and, and just said, you know, your your tender spirit or, um, you know, just your faithfulness or whatever. But I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you you gave yeah. the honest answer. That was really good. Yeah, I would what never I would, would never list those things when describing well, you. But I, yeah, go on. I just want to jump in with something I appreciate so much about both of you, which is that mm -hmm. after after such success, it's just rare to see people with such profound worldwide impact having settled in such humble places as, you know, the Jackson, Tennessee area and Ashland, Ohio. You know, you kind of mm. assume Hollywood Hills mm. or Midtown yeah. Manhattan or even a place like Nashville where I'm just humbly trying to make it. And uh, and you guys are like, no, we're 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 just salt of the earth people, even after all that success. So I just mm. I admire you so much for it. I think the Thanks, crush. Right. That's of so like, true, by the way, too. I think that's. Yeah. I think he's accurate right there, baby. Don't wouldn't you agree? And how he described baby, he's us, absolutely right? accurate right there. And I think the crush and the demands of of this business and of fame just became too much for us in the in the places where we were before. And uh, you know, it's nice to hide out here. I can go to the grocery store here in Jackson and not be bothered. You know, and uh, that's, well, that's huge. and you know, and, and anytime we want to go to Manhattan, you know, we just hop on a plane and we get there because we, you know, we own property there. That's what uh, Bridezilla, the Bridezilla, yeah, Bridezilla. Bridezilla yeah, I mean, land. It, pro it procured property in downtown Manhattan for both you and I. Yeah, that's so. a huge, that's a huge project, you know, and a favorite for a lot of people. Um, Pipe, what's been the most challenging thing about doing this podcast, or the thing that you like the least about doing it? It's it's the hours of research and show prep that we do. It is, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, it comes through in the I, product. Yes, it. I mean, it's it's worth the grind. In the end, you know, we get done. We kind of collapse after after one of these grueling episodes. <laughs> mm. And I think, you know, I'm I'm glad we did that. It was it was worth it. But there's just yeah, there, it, it's not always my favorite to be you know two a.m. three a.m. just combing through documents and mm -hmm. like links of web links of web links to try to find, you know, just the sources, the source material, fact checking, all the stuff that we do to really make the show go. I think that's the most challenging part. Oh no. That, that, and that you know, let me, can I step in there, man, baby? Go, baby. I, I really want us somehow, I, I would love to express our appreciation to mm -hmm. pipe for all of the extra hours that he puts, puts into mm -hmm. it. And I, and I'd, I'd love to, I'd love to honor him. I'd love to give him a gift. I got nothing right now, but I would love to just say that. <laughs> but you would love to. Do. It's really Those the things. thought that counts. Dude, for real Absolutely. though, like all, all kidding aside, um, Piper really does the lion's share of the work on this podcast. And uh, like if there, if there was any of us who, who got close to like doing the bulk of the work, it would be you, Pipe. Um, you're you're kind of like the dad of the podcast, despite being considerably younger than Ronald and myself. Um, I think that's just because I'm the grumpiest one on the podcast. Yeah, I mean, somebody's <laughs> got to do it. Somebody's got to handle all the business. And we would be bearing the lead mm. again, not to mention that you are John Piper's son. Um, you know, so it, if, if we're in the get to know you stage with new listeners, these are kind of baseline things that they should know. And one of my favorite memories of the program was when John Piper came to our live show at um, the church in Indianapolis that sounded like a day spa. What was that place called? Uh, was that Soma? Was that Soma? Yeah. yeah. Soma, Soma in, Church and in Day Spa in Indianapolis. Right? Yeah. Um, your pop showed up. He made an appearance. Uh, the crowd was electric that night uh, because of us, not, not so much because of him. But, uh, but no, that was a <laughs> yeah, lot of they, fun. They barely noticed him because we were just, we were really on our game that night. Oh, absolutely. We were we were for sure on our game. And Pipe, we've got... <laughs> and, and he sat at the back with his arms crossed, and I think he cracked a smile once. So, success, yeah. guys. We did it. He, he looked a little bit dour, you know, but uh, but he was in the room. He was supportive. Um, you know, it gave, us a, it gave us a boost just to see him there, for sure. Let's take a break, and then I got one more question for you. What do you do when the world around you is falling apart? It's amazing to me how many people are breathing air, they're going about their business and doing the things you're supposed to do. But if you really ask them, they know that on the inside, they are spiritually and emotionally and relationally dead. If we're not careful, all of us can experience that death. 
when what we need to do, even as the world around us is falling apart, we need to learn how to march when it would be easier to stay where we are and die. Join me each week on the March or Die show as we discuss that and so much more. As women of Christ, we may be on the same path, but our journeys are rarely the same. Join me, Catherine Calabeo, as I interview inspiring and encouraging women who share their stories of faith on the Sparkle Speak podcast. Hear from real women who share real stories about things like beating cancer, moving across the country, working in ministry, and becoming mothers. Every courageous and uplifting woman I speak to not only discusses the most powerful moments of her life, but also sheds a light on the lessons she learned. To start listening now, go to lifeaudio.com. All right, boys, here's the deal. Uh, because we have some new listeners, I want to hear from each of you how you would describe to people what it is that we do on this program. Uh, now, Big R, you are, in addition to being um, you know, all over the country, all over the globe most weeks, uh, you're a pastor, you're a man of the cloth, you're a networker. Uh, you're a guy who's out there on social media making it happen, getting those retweets from Beth Moore. Um, you know, all the, all the accolades that come from being a social media influencer. How would you describe to people? I'm sure you get a lot of opportunities to do this in your travels. Uh, how would you describe to people, like if you were in an airport lobby and you were in a waiting room and some aspirational Christian celebrity came up to you, let's say it was Beth Moore. Uh, let's say yeah. Beth came up, you guys were in like the ultra gold, double platinum elite waiting room lounge like you both would be in. And she comes up and she goes, hey, I heard you're on this program called The Happy Rant. What is it that you guys do? What would you say to her? Well, baby, it's interesting because I think about two weeks ago, somebody came up, and I don't remember who it was, and it wasn't Beth Moore and it wasn't a celebrity, but they asked me that mm -hmm. exact question. They said, Dude, really? Hey, in what context? I forget. I was at some kind of an event and somebody... Somebody um, had never listened to the, the program, but mm -hmm. somebody had told them about it. Yeah. And so he, was, he came and he said, hey, I keep hearing about this podcast you're on. I think it's called The Happy Rant. And I said, yeah, yeah. And, um, and he said, he said like, what, what is it? He said, because I have friends that listen to it and I just mm -hmm. never clicked on it, you know, for no reason. Yeah. And um, he said, so how would you just, he literally just said what you said. He said, how would you describe it? Interesting. And, um, what did you say? Yeah, this is the first, I've never described it like this before. It was the first thing that came to my mind. I said, you know what? I go, it's kind of, and I'm looking at this dude. He looks like he's in his mid thirties or whatever. Um, and I said, I, it's kind of like the Seinfeld of podcasts. I go, oh. I don't know how to say it other than I go, it's, we're not as funny as Seinfeld. I go, so don't, don't, don't sure. take it that way. I said, Keep the bar low, baby. I go, I said, I did. I said, it's kind of a podcast about nothing. I go, we just mm. talk about whatever we want in the moment with mm -hmm. zero prep. I said, mm -hmm. so you're, you're kind of hearing like three dudes that are kind of in the same sphere, but have, you know, kind of, kind of have, are in, categorically in different places in, in the same sphere. Mm -hmm. And uh, I go, we just riff about stuff that's ridiculous and funny and occasionally serious. And uh, for some reason, people seem to get a kick out of it. So I said, that's, uh, that's kind of what we do. I go, the, the title kind of describes it a little bit. It's not cynical. Um, yeah. we're critical sometimes of things, but we always lace it with humor and ridiculousness. I said, so that's the best way I can describe it. It's the Seinfeld of podcasts. Oh, I love it, baby. That's really good. If we were the Seinfeld of podcasts, like who would you be on it? Um, like which, which of the three kind of bedrock Seinfeld characters would you be? George well, Kramer or, or Jerry? Obviously I'd be Jerry, but I'm I just kidding. I have no idea. Jerry. <laughs> no, I actually think yeah, I, actually I have think no that idea. Works. Yeah. I, do you think he would I don't be Jerry? Know. And who I think would you so because I've probably think... I've I've probably watched like five episodes of Seinfeld like in my ten episodes in my life. So I'm not like really? a, I'm not a huge aficionado. I like the show a lot. I think it's super funny, but I was just I don't know. I've just never watched it. But yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, I think I think Ronnie would would be Jerry for sure because he you know Jerry's sort of the he depend you know he 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 d kind of balances with the other characters cuz they're the more extreme personalities he sort of always has that wry smile everything yeah. is it's it's slightly detached but he's definitely like the, the show doesn't work without him so i i think i think jerry's a good description for also for jerry's jerry's the only one out of the 3 that's always getting on an airplane 
like every third episode of Seinfeld, <laughs> Jerry's flying to like Albany to like do a do a show and at a college or whatever. I, um, I just want to see Ronnie in a puffy shirt. Is really, I mean, oh, oh, no, wait, Judas. I think that's in a music video Judas. someday. So some somewhere back along the way. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. It's pretty easy to see that. Um, pipe. So which which Seinfeld character would you be? Um, I mean, that's pretty odd. That's pretty yeah, odd. I I feel like I would have to be uh, George. Uh, just in terms of sort of the 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 perpetual short fuse, just yeah. you say you say one thing and I and I and I might go off a little bit. Um, yeah. hope, also also kind of a hopefully a key cog, the the one who's always driving ideas. Like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? I, yeah, yeah. I think I'm that guy. Hopefully, a little more chill, but that leaning strongly that direction. George has worked in publishing, and you've worked in publishing. I mean, there there's a lot of parallels. Actually, you both like baseball. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think both, uh, both of I, us hate George Steinbrenner. Yeah, you both hate George Steinbrenner. I think uh, there's a lot of overlap. It's with accurate. George character. It's accurate, baby. I think I'm um, for you. It's going to be a. It could be slightly offensive because you're not Kramer. I, okay. I think you are. Uh, I think you're the whoever. Sorry, and, and again, don't don't take offense. I think you're whoever the lead woman character in the show. Elaine. Is. I don't know her name. Yeah, baby. Elaine. No offense taken. In the, in this day and age, that's a compliment. Okay. She she um, has also had brave the of most... you to say that. She's had the most success as a professional outside of Seinfeld of anybody in that show. So, like, if you if you followed that career arc, yeah. uh, your your way. I mean, I guess Jerry's yeah, baby, just you're fine, lame. but you are yeah. Jerry's doing fine, guys. Don't worry about him. Yeah, Jerry's doing fine. Jerry's uh, paying the rent. Everything's good with Jer. I think Elaine loves, and, and this this might be controversial to you, Pipe. I think Elaine loves books the most out of the three. Like Elaine was the most kind of uh, enmeshed in publishing, um, so that kind of checks out. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm happy with that. I'm not I'm not upset with being Elaine. Uh, she was yeah. She was in a lot of good episodes. I'll I'll take it. So pipe when you know I I want to frame the kind of what do we do on this program question to you, but a little bit differently. Um, your dad is John Piper. Um, he's a serious guy. So like circa a few years ago when the show was kind of starting to pop, um, and you were back home, let's say you're back home with the fam, you're having that family dinner, the conversation's pretty serious. You can hear like the forks, you know, clanking off the plates and nobody's really saying anything, but, but your dad breaks the silence with, so, um, the happy rant, what's that all about? Uh, what, what did you say to him? What did the first conversation with your dad about the program look like? I think I've had as many conversations with my dad's about, with my dad about the happy Rand as I have about like my tattoos, which is to say he <laughs> pretends they don't exist and it's probably uh -huh. better for all of us. Um, <laughs> I do need I to it. be careful cause I do not want to paint my dad as like an antagonist to the show. We just have yeah. very different personalities in terms of, uh, what he is intense about and what I am intense about. Mm -hmm. but let's hypothetically yes we'll put ourselves at that dinner table um it kind of it kind of a meet the parents type scene and he is the Love robert it. de niro character um yeah. grilling me on the on the happy rant i i think i would probably have an immediate like welling up of defensiveness you know like i need mm -hmm. to i need to justify this thing to him and then i would yeah. have to remind myself People who are that serious are probably not our primary audience. So <laughs> we're talking to somebody else here. Um, I would basically try to say we, we are trying to show that Christians can have fun and that we, we try to draw out the absurdity of a lot of the stuff that goes on in our Christian world uh, mm -hmm. without, you know, so not throwing stones at somebody else. You know, we're not, we're not, you know, fighting enemies as much as like, kind of the way that families poke fun at each other. Aren't we absurd yeah. that we all do this thing? That's kind of the vibe. So if I was trying to explain it to somebody who just didn't immediately click with it, it would be that. So this is all in good fun, poking fun at our tribe for all the ways we are absurd and not being bound to uh, everything needs to have sort of a, a Christian twist on it. Like sometimes we can just talk movies, sports, books, uh, Seinfeld, whatever. Love it. Now, if Ron and I were at that same dinner table, um, 
what would our personas be like? What would our vibes be like trying a little bit too hard, trying to, trying to show off a little bit for your dad? Like, what would it, what would it look like? How, how would we perform? That's a, you know, well, this is, I have an easier time picturing, uh, how, how Ron would do at that table because I've been in enough ministry context, you know, there's kind of people of varying levels of influence. Yeah. And, and so I'm more aware of his comfort level of just striking up conversations or just sort of finding the next person in the room who's interesting if the famous person is not, um, sure. which is often the case. <laughs> let's be real clear. Uh, yeah. Ted, I have a harder time with you because you assiduously avoid situations where there are lots of pseudo famous Christian people in the room. Kissing each other's rear ends. Yeah. yeah no, I, <laughs> that's, that's I don't not, love that. That's not your favorite um, scene. Here's the tack I would take with your dad. And I want to know if this would work. Um, it, and by work, I mean just each of us having a good time. I would go like old Vikings players. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd start talking about Randall McDaniel and his weird stance, but how he was one of the best guards in the NFL. Oh, I'm just picturing my dad totally blank stare. Like no idea who you're talking really? about. Because your dad's a bit of a sports guy, right? <laughs> he loves competition. He does not follow any teams. Like he's probably okay. generally aware of who the best player is on a team at any given time. On, uh, for yeah. Minnesota teams. But no, what I would probably do in that situation is set you up for awkwardness by saying, oh, Ted's, Ted's been good friends with Kevin DeYoung for a long time. They wrote a couple books together. <laughs> uh, Dad, you know Kevin. And then just yeah. like, there you go. And he's going to start talking about Kevin's latest article on 37 reasons we should have 37 children or something. And, oh, uh, and, and you, will, you will be handcuffed into that. Meanwhile, I will turn around and <laughs> argue with my brothers about something. I don't know. Yeah, you'll you'll be like a bizarro world point guard, but you're setting me up to not score. You know what I mean? That's right. You're you're throwing me bad passes, bad luck. Here, let me let me ambush you. This is going to be great fun. Exactly. No, yeah, that I was actually going to take that tack. So like if I tried the Vikings thing and it crashed and burned, I would immediately start scrambling for the one bit of overlap that I did have with John Piper. Besides you, honestly, I would I would probably just talk with him about how much I enjoyed your company and that that would be the that would be the tack to take but the other the other one would be kevin DeYoung, and uh just try to see if i could get some mileage out of that possibly the most interesting man in the evangelical world really i mean you know we're we're just we're just hoping to get there um we're hoping to reach the (laughs) the heights of success that their podcast has had um Mm. is is that Mm. thing still a thing the katie uh colin hansen life books and everything podcast Life books and everything. Yeah. Who's the third guy on that thing? Justin Taylor. Yep. He never gets yeah. to talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. He talks like once every third episode. But uh, <laughs> is, is that podcast huge, boys? Is it uh, getting a lot of traction? I don't know there? if it's huge. I, gosh, I, I don't get the sense that it's huge, but I don't know what, I don't know what their download numbers are. A pipe, you wouldn't know that either, would you? I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I, my guess is they, I think they are. I think they're doing very well in their niche. I mean, that is like the gospel coalition, like it, their their triumvirate, their sort of big three stars type of mm-hmm. thing. So, and they bring on guests who are like they've had Tim Keller on and guys like that. And so, yeah, they they do. I'm sure they're doing just fine. Yeah, Pipe, would you say it's more or less popular than the art of pastoring? <laughs> I mean, if we had to get get down to brass tacks and just talk a little business, little media business right now. Well, I mean, they're sort of like evangelical Nickelback, whereas like the art of pastoring <laughs> is like the up and coming like, oh, these these guys write it's like great evangelical songs. radio this head. Is, there's yeah. A, yeah, there's a unique sound here, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Jared wow, seems like really the Tom nice York part. of uh, of evangelical whoa, podcasting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He'll like that comp, dude. That'll make him feel a little cooler. That'll make him walk. It'll a make him feel cool, but he'll have to Google who Tom York is. I think. You know, so <laughs> yeah, to, that'll make him walk a little taller in those ironic <laughs> yeah. vans he's been sporting. Lately. It'd be like Tom yeah. York. Did that guy play in one of the Star Wars movies that I went back and saw a rescreening of this? Exactly week? right. He'll exactly. spell it the wrong way, yeah. like the first three times. Like T O M. I'm not getting anything. You know. Um, <laughs> Ted, how do you how do you answer the question if somebody's like? You know, because you're okay. Let's let's pose the question even differently. Because we've talked about Ronnie being in a room full of famous people. I'm at a yeah. Piper family dinner. You work yeah. with college students, the rising generation of yeah. future evangelical influencers who just aspire to be as amazing as us. Uh, yeah. How do you, when they come to you and they're like, Ted, how can I someday 
achieve your level of podcasting success. What do you guys do? Yeah. How have you done it? What are you doing? What works? How do you answer those yeah. questions? Well, I mean, first I tell them to work really, really hard becoming like a third tier Christian author and then start a podcast. <laughs> um, but no, this actually like on a somewhat serious note, this does happen from time to time. And it usually happens at my college, which is really strange. So the, the most recent instance of this, I was in the cafeteria and I was like at the salad bar and this random kid who I'd never seen before, he comes up behind me and like taps me on the shoulder and he's like, hey, are you Ted Cluck? And I said, yeah. And typically when that happens, it's some kid who's like, oh, I'm going to take your class next semester or whatever. Um, but this kid was like, hey, I just want to let you know I'm a really huge fan of the Happy Rant, um, which is crazy, right? Because this kid's like 19 years old. And then sometimes I'll have their parents come up to me like on a, you know, parents weekend or homecoming or whatever. And they're, this guy's like 52 year old dad will be like, Hey, I'm a huge fan of the happy rant. So I think we have this, we have this odd like range of listeners that doesn't fit really super neatly into any target demo. Right. So it's, I think it's somewhat strange to have a podcast that like 19 year olds listen to and their, you know, 50 year old parents. Um, and ostensibly everything in between. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I would describe what we do. Probably the same way you guys do, which is we, we take some stuff in our tribe and we make fun of it, but we still love the Lord, love the church, love scripture. Um, you know, we take those things really seriously, but we kind of don't take anything else seriously is the way that I would, that I would probably say it. Particularly um, not ourselves. Yeah, definitely not ourselves. And like, so here's the funny thing, and we'll, we'll end on this. If you've spent any amount of time in Christian publishing, unless you are like Tim Keller and you're selling like 3 million copies of every book that you put out, it's impossible to take yourself seriously. I don't know how you can navigate through like a decade plus of doing that and come out the other side with a high view of it or yourself. You know what I mean? So, you know, the result of it is you, you got to kind of laugh at it. Am I crazy for having that take? Is that a weird take? No, I think that's the mature take where you learned, you know, you kind of had some of the ego edges knocked off. But I can tell you after mm -hmm. spending a decade and a half working in Christian publishing, not everybody learns that lesson. There are a that lot of true. B and C list authors who roll in, you know, as if they're like Elton John getting out of the glam limo with like feathers hanging off. And they're sort of like you know, serve me, pay attention to me, you peon publisher workers. And Dude, that's uh, so funny. No, I mean, it's, it, it, there's everything in between. There are so many yeah. gracious yeah. authors. There are some who you're like, I never want to see this person again. And then there's just kind of the array of human experience in between. But sure. there are a lot of people who think that having your name on a book makes you special. And uh, boy, if we've learned anything, it's that that's not true. That is so not true. Boys, we've done what we always do in this program in that we've wandered to and fro talking about ourselves and what we do so uh shout out salem media and until next time We want to take a moment to thank the team at Life Audio for partnering with us on this podcast. Be sure to go to lifeaudio.com and take a look at the other podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Miracles are everywhere. Let our adventure begin! Discover Pure Flix, your premium streaming service where faith and family values come home. Ready to have some fun? The most exclusive selection of quality, wholesome movies and series that will uplift your spirit. A man can argue whether God exists. But when he looks at his daughters, he knows. With new arrivals every week. Unbelievable. Save big and enjoy the possibilities, like invitations to exclusive theatrical screenings. I see it, so I believe it. Find out more by joining today at pureflix.com. Christians should be serious about our faith. But does that mean we need to be serious people all the time? Especially in a world of weird, absurd stuff? And even when Christian culture gets crazy? I'm Barnabas Piper of the Happy Rant Podcast, where we cheerfully rant about pop culture, church culture, work, creativity, life, and just about everything. But we take Jesus seriously. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com.